Human African trypanosomiasis, HAT, alternatively called sleeping sickness, is a vector-borne tropical disease. Around 10,000 new cases are reported in Africa every year. However, it is estimated that many cases go undiagnosed. 70% of infected persons in Africa live in Democratic Republic of the Congo. HAT is transmitted to the mammalian host by an infected satyr fly during a blood meal. It is caused by the group of parasitic protozoa Trypanosoma brucei. The two types which cause the human disease are Trypanosoma brucei gambians and Trypanosoma brucei rodians. Gambians is found in 24 countries in West and Central Africa. It is responsible for 97% of reported cases and it causes the chronic infection of the disease. Rodians is found in 13 countries in Eastern and Southern Africa. It is responsible for 3% of reported cases and it causes the acute infection stage of the disease. If the disease is left untreated or not treated properly, it is certainly almost fatal. HAT is defined by two disease stages. Early hemolymphatic stage, also known as stage one, at this stage, parasites are located in the blood and lymph systems outside the CNS. Non-specific symptoms such as fevers, headaches, itching, and joint pains are observed. The second stage is late encephalitic, also known as stage 2. At this stage, the parasites cross the blood-brain barrier into the central nervous system and neurologically associated symptoms such as changes in sleeping pattern, changes in behavior, and deterioration of mental activity as well as other symptoms are noticed. Currently there are four drugs. For stage one there is ceramine and pentamidine and for stage two there is DMFO and melasopro. All these drugs provide suboptimal treatment. However, they have various limitations such as increasing drug resistance, toxicity and small duration of action. Due to the growing incidence of the disease, it is important that we understand the mechanisms by which the current drugs are building resistance in order to identify a new target for drug treatments. To help with the understanding of resistance, a study was conducted by Professor David Horn, a principal investigator from Dundee University and Associates, to investigate which channels on the parasite were responsible for developing resistance. Why is this research important in the general scheme of things? The drugs currently are very old. There is a, a, quite a high level of resistance to some of them. So we need to really, the feeling is we need to, if we understand the mechanisms by which the current drugs work or by how, how resistance arises, then we're much better placed to actually develop new drugs. Drug resistance frequently occurs in melaspro-resistant parasites. These often show a tolerance to toxic substances as a result of exposure to similar substances. Aquaglyceporins are water channels on trypanosome surface which allow the transport of water, small and charged solutes, and active transport of glycerol. A gene encoding two similarly related forms, AQP2 and AQP3, were linked to drugs cross resistance in a high energised non working screen. Why did you decide to consider AQPs specifically? So we developed these uh, high throughput genetic screens that actually allowed us to query the entire genome and ask the question in relation to every single gene in the genome as to whether it was related to resistance. So we asked that question in, the, in these screens for 7,500 genes and actually it was the aquaglyceroporin locus that stood out as the genetic locus that was specifically responsible for that phenotype which is resistance to both melaspro and pentamidine. Can you clarify how AQP2 works? So we know that acroglyceroporin 2 is on the, on the surface of the trypanosome. Actually, it's in what's called the flagella pocket. This is really thought of as actually the, the you can think of it as the mouth of the trypanosome. It's where the, how the trypanosome feeds. It's how it takes up nutrients. So really, what this drug is exploiting is the feeding mechanism of the trypanosome. It's really eating the drug. So we know that the protein's on the surface. We know that it's responsible for the uptake of these drugs, both melasoprol and pentamidine, but we don't know precisely how that happens. How does resistance arise? But it's a DNA break that appears to be the trigger for these, for these recombination events. There are two of these acrylogistropoin genes that are next to each other. And it, a break in any one of them appears to lead to a recombination that joins them both together. So that actually probably disrupts the function of both of them. And it prevents the AQP2 here 
for example, from working anymore because it's fused to another gene, so it changes its structure. Are there any ideas for new drug targets? There's not a lot of enthusiasm, uh, in my view, for, for melastro or arsenic-based drugs in the future. So we really need um, low toxicity compounds, highly selective compounds, cheap compounds, and stable compounds that can be delivered in those kind of environments. So you know, the target product profiles have a big role in really defining what people need to achieve in this arena. Taking all this into account, alternative accessible treatments are needed to tackle the ongoing issue of HAT.